Hey folks, how are y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of All About Drug Addiction. My name is Doug and I'm a former opioid addict, benzo addict, and uh, I've got a lot of experience with uh, addiction related to prescription medication. I uh, also got an 11-year uh, uh, med surge experience, uh, you know, dosing people and knowing how uh, medicine works. Uh, the topic for today's discussion is opioid-induced insomnia. Before we really get off into that, I did a, a, a query online for opioid-induced insomnia, and it's not an actual uh, diagnosis. Um, here's the deal. The other day, I was talking with a friend. I hadn't spoke to him in a long time. He's got cancer, lymphoma, and it's treatable. <clears throat> and I gave him a call to check on him, and me and him both have similar backgrounds. He's like eight months older than I am. We kind of grew up together. We're from the same hometown. And um, he's been on morphine or some type of opioid for the past 25, 30 years. Uh, he had an accident where his he was delivering um, produce or something. His truck rolled over, and he had a bad back problem. Um, we got to talking and he, you know, uh, talking about, yeah, I'm still on pain medicine. I'm still on disability. Now I got chronic insomnia. And, uh, a little light went off in my head because I've tried to talk to this guy about possibly getting off opioids and he just doesn't want to do it. I'm like, dude, why don't you try, uh, uh, uh the keto diet? Uh, it's really good for, uh, people to have, um, a lot of pain, especially due to arthritic conditions. No, I don't want to do that. Um, don't you want to try to come off pain medicine? I can't. I hurt too bad. I hurt too bad. And then when he brought up the subject of insomnia and taking Restoril, I remembered that when I was on opioids, uh, I developed chronic insomnia. Uh, the term I'm going to use is, use is opioid-induced insomnia, though I don't know that there is such a diagnosis named that way but I did look it up and I did find a lot of articles on um, you know the first page of queries that stated that there's been a lot of research into it and that up to 75% of people who have chronic long-term use of opioids do experience sleep disorders including insomnia and uh, sleep apnea and both are detrimental to your health um, sleep apnea can cause chronic fatigue in the day and it can also lead to uh, chronic cardiac problems. If you don't know what sleep apnea is, it's when you go to sleep and um, you stop breathing for a period of time, up to a, mi a minute or so. And when that happens, uh, you don't get good deep REM sleep. Um, you just get superficial sleep. I got a buddy of mine um, who had a sleep study done and he, he it, he's got it. But he's not an opioid user, but he uses CPAP to sleep at night. So when my, my buddy Bernie was telling me about his insomnia, and I was trying to tell him, hey, dude, why don't you, why don't you do a couple of weeks of getting off uh, your medicine? I don't want to do that, man. I can't do it. I can't do exercise either. I got a heart condition. <clears throat> I tried to tell him, hey, dude, you know, when I was working med surge, I also worked rehab nursing, which is when people have like a back surgery or coronary artery bypass or some other surgery that sets you back and it's going to take a while for you to get back on your feet again you come from the hospital to our hospital and then every day you have a regimen of exercises that you do with physical therapy and we've rehabbed people with chronic really bad heart conditions and got them back on their feet and, and got them to get their wind back, their strength, the stamina, and all that. But I, I couldn't talk to him about this. He doesn't want to hear it. Um, we've been doing doing this back and forth, off and on, for a long time. But it did make a light bulb go off in my head, and I remembered that when I was on um, opioids the last time, I developed chronic insomnia. <clears throat> and let me, if you don't know my history, here's the deal: chronic back pain on and off opioids since 1997 up until 2016 and roughly 2013 through 2016 I was seeing a, a, a 
a pain management doctor. I started off on Norco, 10 milligrams four times a day, then 20 milligrams four times a day, and then oxycodone 15, then 20, then 25, and then finally 30. <clears throat> and the reason I kept bumping up, uh, most of you know, but if you don't know, you'll learn something here, that pain medicine creates more pain than it actually alleviates. It's called uh, rebound pain, and that's associated with taking the pain medicine. Um, that's why you have to keep going up and up in doses. It's not that your disease process is getting any worse. It's because the medicine cannot effectively address the pain, and for some unknown reason, you start having more pain while taking pain medicine. You go see your pain doctor, and he bumps you up. So I got tired of that, <clears throat> and but one of the things that I was noticing a lot um, was that I would have five to 10 days of not being able to sleep, and that's on 30 milligrams of oxycodone plus two milligrams of clonopin twice a day. So I had plenty of medicine that should help me to sleep, and I was not falling asleep. And I didn't realize at the time that that was the problem, I just thought, well, that's just another problem I'm having. It just you're getting old, and you, now you're going to develop insomnia, and that's just a that's just something else you need medicine for. <clears throat> when when you start taking high doses of uh, pain medicine, it dumbs you down. Your thinking process is blunted. So I wasn't using my med surge experience when I got wrapped up in all these uh, pain medication pills. So when I got off the pain medicine, the first thing that I noticed is that I, I was able to sleep at night. As a matter of fact, um, I haven't had a bout of insomnia since I stopped taking opioids. Um, aside from not being able to sleep up to 48 hours, five to 10 times per month, I was also sleeping through my alarm clock. Let's say I went to bed at midnight and had to be up at eight that wasn't going to happen. I bought three alarm clocks and I'd sleep through all of them. Not only sleep through them, but I'd sleep anywhere from 10 to 15, 16 hours. And that's due to narcotic use. Well, when he said this about not being able to sleep, I said, this is something I need to take to my channel because there's a lot of people in opioids who want to get off and they don't know how to get off medicine. And if you want to get off opioids, um, I've got a proven method. Go look at my channel, subscribe, and it's called How to Withdraw from Opioids Using Tramadol. I'm not going to get into that right now. You may go, you don't want to trade one narcotic for another. You're not doing that. I'm not going to explain it. Just go look at the video. I've already uh, done a follow-up video of all the people who have, you know, tried it and gotten off opioids with zero withdrawal using tramadol people wrote in hey dude it worked it worked and then you get these trolls go you can't trade one opioid for another tramadol's addictive they don't listen they don't listen as far as the insomnia thing if you want to get your life back into order I advise you to get off opioids um, I can tell you this that in May I had a tooth pulled and I was prescribed uh, Norco. And I made the mistake of taking a Norco like at 8 p.m. that night. And guess what? I stayed up until 6 a.m. I crawled in bed, tired at midnight, but I didn't fall asleep till 6 a.m. And I was trying to figure out what, what, why am I having, why am I having insomnia? I haven't had insomnia since I was on opioids. And then ding, another light went off, goes, you idiot, opioids, cause insomnia. So to relieve my tooth pain, I continued taking the, um, the Norco, but I would stop taking it. I wouldn't take it any later than 4 p.m. in the evening to make sure that I got sleep that night. And guess what else happened while I was on just a four or five day course of pain medicine? I started sleeping 12, 14 hours during that duration of taking the pain medicine and I was also dragging ass. My alarm clock would go off. I would hear it, but I was like, 
I can't get up, man. I'm just so tired. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so tired. And I, dr I dragged ass all day. Then I went back and I looked and I'm like, because you took the Norco. That's what all that was about. I know there's a lot of people out there that say, well, I'm on pain medicine for a reason because I need it. Let me tell you something as a former addict, as somebody who has 11 years of medical surgical uh, nursing experience, and as somebody who's done a, a, just a little bit of research, you can come off opioids without getting sick by using Tramadol. You need to see your doctor about it. Go look at my videos. I've also published a webpage on it as well um, that you can uh, look at. Just go back and look at my videos and subscribe and you'll see. You can also do diet. Many people who have uh, pain related to like arthritis or previous injury or stuff, it is a well-known fact that uh, processed food, fast foods, stuff with like ketchup, mayonnaise, all these foods has got preservatives in it. These foods are not natural to your body to break down. And I don't know what the exact process is, but it does cause inflammation. And inflammation with people who have uh, pain conditions makes pain worse. So it's been proving that people that get off these really bad diets and go to a ketogenic diet, they report less pain. People who implement uh, a workout regimen uh, consisting of lifting weights, you don't have to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger and lift a lot of heavy stuff and get bumped up. You don't have to do that. But lifting weights builds strength. Uh, cardio makes your heart stronger. And these things also release natural chemicals that no pill they can replicate, but they create a cascade of other problems. Um, you release endorphins like uh, endorphins like, um, and dopamine, serotonin, and you reduce uh, cortisol, which is a stress hormone. So there are things that you can do once you get off these pain medicines to manage your pain problem. Now, though I was on chronic use of pain medicine for a long time, once I got off, I, I started working out, exercising, better diet and stuff like that, and my pain has gotten much better. I can deal with it with Tylenol or a couple of Advil every once in a while, and that's about it. If I gotta have a tooth pulled, I, I gotta have something for pain, but I, I don't relapse because I wasn't that type of addict. Uh, I wasn't abusing for the euphoria and all that. I was taking for the pain, and the pain just kept getting worse and worse and worse because pain medicine creates more pain than it alleviates. Look it up. Dr. Drew talks about it. It's the same thing with benzos. You take benzos for anxiety, you're going to end up with more anxiety, and you're going to end up asking for more benzos from your doctor. If you take a sleeping pill, it's going to create insomnia, and then your doctor's going to have to bump it up. And it's always the risk, the benefits versus the risk. Does the benefit of the medication outweigh the risk? And in my case, for benzos and for opioids and for sleeping medicine, no. Now in the beginning, yeah, it seemed like this was the deal. This was the magic cure. But medicine only, only goes so far. And I, I'm gonna tell you something else that I know from research and from my experiences being a nurse and from a close friend who's a doctor. And the thing is that you need to take as less medicine as possible. Uh, the more medicine you take, the more problems you're gonna have. Every medicine comes with a side effect or a risk. And people just pop pills. Oh, oh, I got high cholesterol, forget it, I don't wanna work out. Hey, can I have a Big Mac with extra cheese and uh, some of those salty fries and a milkshake? And go, my cholesterol is under control, I take whatever, I take a statin drug. The best thing is not to eat that crappy food, exercise, and then not have to take the statin, and then not have to get on high blood pressure, and then not have to take metformin or insulin for diabetes 
all of these conditions, the majority of them are not genetic. They are as a direct result of your lifestyle or your death style, whatever you want to call it. Um, look at Trump. Now, this is not political. I'm not telling you who to vote for. But I look at the man. He's, what, 72 years old? He doesn't take any medicine, period. He's got great genes, but he eats a horrible diet. But he just lucked out by getting the right genes. I can tell you as someone who has worked with thousands of uh, people in hospitals and clinics and nursing homes and uh, all over the place, people in their 70s are usually on 5, 10 medications, and this guy's not. So people wonder why, how is this guy able to stay up to all hours of the night, get a few hours of sleep, wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and get on Twitter, and then do his job of president all day long? Well, probably, aside from the genetics, he doesn't take any medication because every medication you take has a side effect. And let me emphasize that with this. The other day I woke up and I was un unsure if I'd already taken all my medicines. And one of my medications is uh, a blood pressure pill called lisinopril hydrochlorothiazide. I knew that, I could, that if I forgot to take that medicine and all the other medicines, I could still take my other medicines and not have a risk of adverse health reaction to taking too, medicine, too much medicine. But I knew that if I had taken the lisinopril and I take it again, that I was going to spend the whole day not being able to work. And I was either going to be in the bed or I was going to be in my recliner because when you take too much of a blood pressure medicine, you're going to have orthostatic hypertension, which hypotension, which means when you get up, your blood pressure is going to drop. If you walk around, there's a, a, a high risk for falls due to blacking out from low blood pressure. So I didn't take the medicine. I, I kept a check on my blood pressure all the, that day. And I go, you know what? I need to look this medicine up again. I hadn't looked it up in a while. And it started talking about uh, the adverse reactions, which is tiredness, weakness, and fatigue, and cough. And I'm like, dude, I've been having those problems for the longest time. I'm like, I've always been energetic. Why is it that I've been feeling so crappy? And I was thinking about going to see my doctor about it. And my doctor probably would not have to go, oh, that's due to the lisinopril. Ah, uh, dude, look, look here at your chart. You're, you're in your late 50s. Uh, uh, you probably got depression. Let's put you on um, an SSRI. And that's how problems get compounded and made worse and worse and worse. Now that I've stopped taking that medication, my energy has returned. That dry hacking cough, that, that unproductive cough, it's gone. I'm still waiting on the advice of my doctor on, on what to do about that, uh, but my blood pressure is still stable and it's, it's not high. But my goal is to get off all the medication that I can, can get off of. There's one medication that I do have to take for my thyroid because I had Graves' disease and it's, a, it's Synthroid. It's a, a synthetic hormone replacement tablet. I cannot stop taking that, but everything else that I'm taking, I can stop that. I just got to get back in the gym, get back on the keto diet, and uh, and work on that. And you guys can do the same thing for your um, your chronic pain. It, but if you got the mindset that oh I got chronic pain, I got to keep seeing my doctor because he's got to give me more medicine to treat my pain. The medicine he's giving you is not treating your pain. The medicine he is giving you and increasing it from the dosage it was prior is to treat chronic rebound pain caused by the narcotic you're taking. Narcotics do that and benzodiazepines do that. You have to constantly keep going up and up and up and ask yourself, do you want to be doped up all the time? Do you want to sleep through your alarm clock? Do you want to sleep? 10, 15, 16 hours a day? Do you want to be tired? Do you want to be addicted to this pill? And here's something else to think about. And this is something that, that always disturbed me. 
is that when I was on an addictive medicine like an opioid or a narcotic or a sleep medicine, I got to thinking, what if I didn't have money on the day that came to get my prescription? If I, can't, if I don't have the money, I can't get it. And if I can't get it, I'm going to go into withdrawals. Or what's going to happen if there was some disruption in the supply chain from the pharmacy? In which now that we got COVID and everybody went crazy, ape shit crazy, uh, buying toilet paper and everything else, that is a possibility. I mean, we're September 2020 now, but what if another outbreak happens with some other more horrible lethal pathogen and it causes a disruption to the economy and to um, the pharmaceutical industry? What happens if you can't get those medications and you got to run out to the to uh, to buy, buy them off the street. That never set well with me, and that was one of those things that kept me up at night. With you, you may go, I ah, ain't gonna have, don't wanna worry about it, fine. But I'm just saying, the best medicine is no medicine. The best medicine is actually a good lifestyle. Eating healthy, avoiding sugar, avoiding processed foods, avoiding fast foods, eating natural whole foods that come out of the ground or natural uh, uh, meat. This this whole thing several months ago about this artificial meat that Burger King is making, that's nonsense, people. If you want to eat meat, eat meat. If you want butter, eat butter. Butter is actually more healthier than margarine. Meat is ha healthier than some processed, you know, finagled uh, imitation product. Eat the real thing. But I'm just saying, healthy diet, healthy lifestyle it will help you to get off these medications. And the less medicines you take, the less risk of adverse reactions and side effects that, that, that you will, you know, incur by taking these medicines. Anyway, that's going to do it for this channel. If you want to find out how to get off benzos or you want to find out how to uh, withdraw from benzos with absolutely no withdrawal syndrome, you want to find out how to withdraw from opioids with no withdrawal syndromes go to my channel subscribe and look for the videos i've only got like six or seven videos and it's how to withdraw from opioids using tramadol and the 45 day benzo taper uh had hundreds of people write me hey these things work and if you want to get off this stuff and get your life back together it's the way to go hey thanks for watching my channel watching this video please like share and subscribe